Hey, James and Phil at Bimmer World, and behind us is our GT More project car. So, one of the first things that really kind of started this project was suspension. We've we've been running these GT4 cars with just these massive tires, and I, you know I say massive tires. We're talking about a 305 slick, which is which is pretty big, and it's huge to stuff under the front of one of these cars. No way in the world that you get that size tire reasonably on a stock car. And, and make it work like a race tire. Give yourself the camber adjustment, all the, all the adjustments you need to actually make that tire work like it should to optimize the performance. So it, the project kind of started with, how are, we gonna, how are we gonna fit these tires on the car? And you know, as, as we see the, what we actually have on these cars, this is a 315 Continental. Uh, this one's on an 1811 TA16 forged wheel. We've had our Bim World TA5Rs, we've had the motorsport wheels, all of those fit on the front of this car now. So this is our GT More suspension package, probably the ultimate ultra premium option, right? This this is definitely this is the suspension for a track guy that wants the best or if you're racing, no brainer. This is what you want on the car. So we've taken a lot of these GT4 concepts and then improved them. That that's the whole theme of the GT More to take a GT4 car make it better. What would we do if we elevated that, that performance? An MCS-based suspension, three-way dampers, camber plates. These are Bimmer World camber plates. It's a special top mount camber plate with the pill adjustment system. It, so basically that means that it takes, it's, it's no longer a pin at the top. It's an eye mount that can actually go under the strut tower. Under the strut tower mean, means you're going to be able to get more camber into that that tire or in in the case of what we've done here with some shorter spl arms you're going to be able to pull that whole hub assembly further inboard and then allow you room under a stock fender with with no modifications to fit this massive amount of meat under the front of this car and in the rear kind of a no-brainer it just works but the the magic is how do we fit this on the front so we had to work on a, on a camber plate that's more appropriate uh, for, for a typical DOT tire, uh, something that you could run on the street because the range that we work in on the motorsport camber plates and on the GT4 cars, I mean, we're running five degrees of camber on those things and that just does not work with a lot of these other tires. So what did, what did you do on camber plates? Yeah, so I mean, like you said, those camber plates can get like negative five or more and the most positive camber you can get might be too much negative camber for some of these. So we changed the range back about a degree. Um, but also a lot of people think of a camera plate as a camber and caster plate and the GT4 plates have no caster adjustment. So we also modified the slider to have a, a three position caster adjustment. Um, so you can go deep, middle or, uh, or positive um, to give yourself a little bit more, more range of adjustment there. So an appropriate range of camber adjustment for a typical DOTR, if still fully in the range of a race slick, we're selling race takeoff tires for 75 bucks a piece. I mean, that's, there's a, there's a massive supply of used 305 racing slicks with tons of life. So now you can actually fit these things on your car and your tire budget just went to, to the floor. So now the camber plates have the tops sorted out we had to work on the bottom to, to move that spindle in to allow for the big, the massive, right? The 315, even, even wider than that 305 slick. We had to pull the hub assembly in. So how did we do that? Yeah, I worked with SPL on coming up with a complete arm package. Um, you know, it was, uh, we were looking at the GT4s, like what did they do differently to get this whole thing sucked in? And, you know, recognize there were some, some differences there. And uh, SPL was great to work with on, on specking a package specifically for us uh, to be able to, adjust everything in and you know the whole package comes with with baseline settings to help you get on the right track because this can be a confusing thing to set up it's a it's a lot of stuff that's going on here but we're here to help get you on the right track and this package will come complete ready to get you going relatively easily super comprehensive package uh it, and the spl arms they're not they're not just the stock replacement they also include roll center correction some some nice goodies i mean it's it's high-end stuff if i was building a modified race car at the highest level this is how i would build that car that's the magic on the front. Let's go check out the rear. So now we're at the back of the GT More, and it's it's not as difficult back here to fit that big wheel tire. Same 1811 wheel with a different offset, so it is a front and rear wheel, but it's that same size wheel. It's that same 305 tire again, 315 on this car for street tires, and not as difficult to fit it in the back. Basic Alcon brakes. That's just an upgrade on the on the braking system of the car. We'll talk about that later, but. Some of the some of the bigger changes on this car, um, 
we did go to a full coilover configuration. So unlike some of the earlier BMW models, these chassis are already nicely reinforced so that you can go to a true coilover, get rid of that DeBoer setup, which really just gives us a lot better spring selection because we just run out of spring rate when we're trying to run it inboard on the arm. So we're not doing that. We've got a true coilover setup. We've got a sway bar that Hotch has produced for us front and rear. And again, it's, it's like GT4 stuff, but better. Or in this case, also kind of more applicable to what we're doing on streetcars. So a GT4 with a fuel cell and we don't have to worry about a fuel filler and any of that stuff, you know, a GT4 sway bar works great. It's a really simple bar. On this, we had to make the bar work around the coil springs, around that added spring mass that we put on the, over the rear damper. Uh, but we had to work around the gas filler, the, you know, some of the other challenges we have on the car. Uh, we did race arms. So I, I love race arms similar. Uh, and when I, when I say race arms, I'm talking about spherical bearing ended arms with range of adjustment. So to me, the cool part of that, and this is the same kind of stuff that we have on the GT4 car, we get to set the geometry better for the track environment than, uh, than the street car would allow through its range of adjustment. We just don't have that level of range of adjustment. We can, and we, and we do preset these. So, so you guys get kind of the stuff that we're doing on the GT4 car, we can just make the car turn better and make it more stable with the ge geometry adjustments we're doing in the rear. Um, you talked about a range of camber. What, are, what else do we get from those arms? Yeah, you, uh, a lot of times your camber adjustment is done with the eccentric bolt to the bottom and you know, you're moving the bottom in and out, but now your camber adjustment can be moved to the top with an adjustable arm. And what you gain with that as well is now you kind of can play with tire clearance as well as track width a little bit. You about, there's about eight millimeters of adjustment you can now, now shift in and out on each side. That's how we do it. And now I'm sure there's, there's some people saying, wait, I've seen big wheels and tires under this car before. Um, and other people, we know, we know they're doing it. We know they're not using your parts. So, you know, like I said, you can fit this stuff under the car, but fitting it is step one, making the car work like a race car, getting the benefit of the tire that you're stuffing under there. You'd be better off with a 285 that works properly rather than stuffing this big stuff under there especially done incorrectly. So what do we see done incorrectly? Like how are guys trying to jam this stuff under and like shortcutting this level of product? In the front, a lot of times it's, uh, it's, it's notching the tower and locking yourself into a very narrow window of things. Um, and you know, your geometry in the front is gonna be a little bit out of whack just to accommodate it where this package up front really just allows adjustments all over to get it back into the proper window of things. Right, forget forget range of adjustment on the front. You know, you, you're not, it, just fitting it takes a very specific setup and you're not gonna be able to adjust what you've got to make it work properly. And beyond that, you mentioned notching the front. Super important to note that all this stuff is bolt on. Due to that eye top that we've done on the front damper, it bolts on the car. You don't have to butcher the car to make anything fit. It works the way it's supposed to work. Yep. So what about the rear? I know that was a challenge for us. Uh, the rear, the, the sway bar clearance was a big thing for us where we worked with Hotchkiss to get that, that sway bar that has full clearance around the coilover. There are you know, options out there where sometimes people will offset, a, offset the rear shock. Yeah, there, there's nuance in this, right? Like how, yeah. do you, how, how do you say that? Because you know, I can see on some, some things people are doing, it's not necessarily done correctly. There are loads created when you come up with these solutions to kind of shift this, move this, make these compromises to make things fit. The only way to make a rear coilover shock fit on this car properly is with this sway bar. I, we tried the GT4 bar, it doesn't work. We had to bend our own sway bar to get rid of the contact and to make that shock center up in the arm and work appropriately. That's the only way you can appropriately get the rear bar in the car. Yep. So lots of pieces to make this thing work. Again, the catalyst for it was fitting those monster wheels and tires, front and rear, but there's lots of other advantages. It's gone to full, full spherical bearings. We, we have MCS three ways on this car. We could do two way remotes. We can do non remotes. We don't list them, but give us a call. We'll set you up with that. But beyond that, it has, it, it's just the most comprehensive suspension package we've ever put together for a car. And like anything in a car, the, the suspension works together as a unit. The whole car works together as a unit. And I like to think of a systematic approach, but specifically for the suspension, all this stuff needs to work together. 
And when you do this GT more suspension, it's all in the box and we know it works because we've done years of testing on this, to, uh, on this setup to nail it.